With the solar panels and charge controller wired, it's time to finish up the inverter wiring and test the whole system. And spoiler alert, things did not go as planned. Before we start the video, I just wanted to note that the last several months I've been focused on the major changes in my life and the production quality of my videos just hasn't been a big focus. I only have a few hours a week to work on YouTube, so I'm doing the best that I can, but I fully understand that if I want to grow this channel and become a better YouTuber, I need to work on my camera work, video editing, thumbnails, and content. So please bear with me for a little while longer, and hopefully I'll be able to focus on that more. Thanks for your patience. Now on to the video. I picked up a small load center and heavy gauge Romex from my old house that I needed to wire the inverter AC output. I mounted it up high on this piece of plywood on the right side of the enclosure because that's the side the inverter's mounted on. I previously used this in my solar shed and it worked great, so I just kept all the wiring as is. But I'll need to change out one of the breakers as you'll see later. And because I like to reuse things, and because this enclosure is only going to be used for a year or two, I'm not going to cut the Romex to length. So I just wrapped the excess in bunches and zip tied them out of the way. I fed one of the circuits through a hole on the right side down low and mounted a weatherproof bell box with a 20 amp outlet. I'm going to use this outlet to run just the 10,000 BTU dual duct portable air conditioner in the bedroom of the travel trailer overnight and for other things in the future. Sometime in the future though, I'll use the second circuit in the load center for a 30 amp output to power the whole trailer. Anyway, I finished off the bell box with an in-use cover to keep things waterproof because it actually does rain here in Texas sometimes. Not any time recently, as you can probably tell by the dust. With everything wired up to my satisfaction on the inverter side, I attached the cover on the load center to get ready to check the systems. To check the systems, I plugged in the Hawk battery and flipped on all of the various breakers. Everything checked out and functioned like it should. This was pretty early in the morning without direct sun, so obviously not much power is being produced, but everything looked good. Unfortunately, they put the on button in the most obnoxious place possible on the inverter, but I managed to find it blindly and get that turned on and checked out as well. Okay, we've made a lot of progress. And as you saw, we just did a systems check. Everything is working great. Um, the sun is just barely out. It's about 9.30. I mean, it's not barely out, but it's, it's barely producing any power. So, uh, you know, the charge controller is functioning, but not producing a ton of power at this point. The inverter is functioning. As you can see, it's, it's searching for a load. That's what it looks like on the little remote monitor thing when it's searching and you won't be able to hear it but it makes this clicking sound constant back and forth as it searches so uh, what I want to do now is um, and as you can see I finally installed this little door I don't know if these little hinges are gonna last very long but we'll see and you saw that I installed this bell box outside um, you know just a waterproof outdoor box. I am going to use some some silicone to make sure it's waterproof and everything like that. Um, please ignore this. This is this is tied to this side which I'm not going to turn on. I've also um, used plenty of tape to tape it off and isolate it and everything like that so it's it's not a hazard. It, I know it looks terrible. Um, eventually this side is going to I'm going to install another box on this side and put a 30 amp RV output to it and that's why I have these 30 amp breakers I will replace this side with a 20 amp breaker that's the right size for this uh, 20 amp outlet as you can see it's the it's the heavy duty 20 amp size uh, I think I've done everything correctly. I'm not obviously not an electrician, so please don't take everything that I'm doing as by code or anything like that. But it, it works, and I haven't blown anything up yet, so hopefully I don't. Anyway, uh, I've got a, an extension cable going over to uh, the battery charger. This autofocus is terrible. I'm sorry, guys. It is lazy. Uh, I've got a, a battery charger over there, a NOCO Genius charger that 
I need to charge up the 12 volt battery on my trailer. Not that I use it ever, but I do use it to deploy the awning and stuff like that. So, all we need to do is flip this thing on. That thing turns to inverting now. As you can see, it's no longer searching for a load. It has a load. And so then we can go over here to, and again, the autofocus is awful. So we've got our our charger here, and this, this battery is totally dead. This is just a piece of crap that they gave me when I bought the trailer several months back, and it did not last long. So I'm going to try to revive it and get some more life out of it before I switch it to lithium. But anyway, just wanted to give an update. Everything's working. I will update you on how this works. I decided to test something smaller, see how that goes, and then let this thing charge up throughout the day and then connect it to the air conditioner in the window overnight and that uses i've been measuring it that uses between four and six kilowatt hours in a given night depending on you know conditions so um this is a 5.9 kilowatt hour battery so it should be maybe just enough we'll see uh, I did fully design this whole system and, and obviously, you know, I designed width and all that stuff to accommodate at least one more battery, possibly three altogether to completely meet the needs of, of the, the trailer. And obviously I will need a whole, whole lot more solar, probably triple this much solar, at least three kilowatts of, of solar to t even try to pull something like that off. So. When my house sells and I get some more proceeds, I will look into all that stuff. Anyway, here's the first little test we're gonna do. I'll come back and update you when we're done. Okay, it's about 5 p.m. now. Uh, we passed our first test. It ran that charger over there for a while, several hours. I think the battery's dead. It still didn't, uh, didn't charge it up, so that's a different subject. Anyway, uh, this has been charging with the solar all day, and so um, now I've got this extension cord here that that runs to the air conditioner. It's a, a dual duct portable air conditioner that's in the bedroom in there. Uh, it pulls at full full power. It'll get up to about 1,400 watts, and then it'll it'll creep down to about a thousand watts when it's running so this will be a good significant little test for this uh, i'm going to run it for i'm going to try to run it for about two hours this first time i'm not going to try to run it overnight yet because i still need to do some tuning on the the charge controller to get um you know the set the right settings for lithium in there and all that stuff so uh, i'm just going to test the battery and the inverter and all the systems to make sure they can handle a larger load like that and if that is successful, then we'll move on to a full night's test. Okay, it's on and running. So let's go check how everything's doing. Okay, so you can see we're drawing 60 amps. Now that is... Um, the power that the inverter is drawing, that's power 60 amps at 24 volts from the battery, and then it's inverting it and outputting it to the AC. So it's not 66 amps of, of AC power or anything like that. So again, like I said, it kind of ranges between 1,000 and 1,400 watts. So um, that's well within spec, everything looks good. There's no alarms or beeping or any anything weird. Uh, voltage is, is hanging steady. It's dropping a little bit, but hanging steady in the high 25s. So that's, that's good so far. I'll come back in a couple hours and we'll see what's going on. Okay, it's two hours later. Uh, the first test was a little inconclusive. For some reason, the, uh, we tripped the breaker down there once for for whatever reason so i came back out 
it, it shut off the air conditioner. I came back out to see what was going on. Couldn't figure out, so I put the, flipped the breaker back on, tried it again, and I watched it closely this time, and the, the amps coming from the battery into the inverter jumped up to like 140 or 150, and the, the inverter started buzzing, which it does when it, it's under a high load. And so I kind of panicked a little bit and flipped the breaker and, and shut it down. Uh, there's no reason ever that that, that, that uh, you know, mobile portable air conditioner should be pulling 2,000 watts plus. So I don't know what that meant. It happened a couple times. It's not doing it this time. Uh, it's a couple hours later. It's, it's not quite as hot. Maybe the heat had something to do with it. I don't know, I'm gonna check all the connections in the morning, check everything out thoroughly. I'm also going to um, go get the, the 20 amp breaker to, uh, to protect ourselves here, but I figured I'll do a real quick test again this evening um, and kind of watch it a little bit closely. And if it spikes up in current again, I'll shut it off. So. That's what I'm going to do, and then we'll let the solar charge it up tomorrow. We'll get the breaker replaced, and then we'll give it another try to run it under a two-hour test. Okay, this is the final test for the week. I just turned it on, the air conditioner. We're already climbing up. So that's normal. We've got a 20-amp breaker in here. Uh, I played around with the charging settings. This is super complicated to figure, well, it's probably not complicated, but the, the instructions and the documentation for these things is, is atrocious. So I'm gonna probably have to contact Magnum Support to try to figure out how to properly program these. Uh, the settings that I'm putting into this MEARC remote do not seem to be taking effect in the charge controller. And there's not really like a web interface or any any way for me to like tell what's going on other than a few parameters that it displays on the front here. So uh, I also need to contact Battery Evo and get the charge parameters that they prefer or they recommend for this particular battery. So I've got some emails sent out on that, but for now, we're just rolling with what we've got. We're just trying to figure out if we can run this air conditioner long-term or not. So I'm waiting to see if it does that weird 150 amp spike. Uh, it actually must have gotten over 300 because it tripped that breaker. So I don't. there's no scenario on planet Earth where an air conditioner like that would pull 300 plus amps at 24 volts DC. So really weird anyway uh, I'm gonna watch this and give you an update when we're done okay well the same thing happened again I still don't know what it is uh, this this breaker right here tripped I know I don't need a breaker on the negative so I may just bypass that and be done with it but um, you know I really would just want to get bus bars I just don't want to fork out the money for it. I know I'm I'm cheap right now. Uh, so anyway, I might bypass that, but it's a little alarming that I'm tripping a 300 amp breaker somehow. It ran about 45 minutes this time and then tripped and I wasn't out here to catch it because it's 105 plus outside and I can't stand out here forever. So I have no idea what happened, but uh, we're gonna keep working on it and I'm gonna try to get in touch with tech support and see where we go from there. But um, I've been working on other things while I'm waiting. I've got, uh, I know it looks ugly, but this is all gonna get be covered up. So I'm using scraps. So I put some of this this stuff on here. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna caulk the seams a little bit just in case some, some uh, drips get through. Uh, I've got this this uh, flashing, whatever it's called. It'll be like a, a ridge cap that'll go on top of there. I'm gonna do something here. I haven't really figured out what. I don't know if I'm just gonna put some screen material here, but I'm worried about rain penetrating in. 
So, but I like I like that it has a cross breeze through to try to keep this uh, from overheating. So anyway, we made a lot of progress this week, but I'm done for the week. So I'm gonna stop the video here and actually do another video once I get this stuff figured out. I'm not gonna bore you guys with troubleshooting and with endless yakking, but I will uh, come back when I get this all figured out and so we can do an overnight test. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video. And if you have any tips on what you think might be my problem, be sure to leave it in the comments below.